I'm at three in the morning. Who is this? It's, it's Jake from State Farm. What are you wearing, Jake from State Farm? Uh, khakis? Hey, do they ever ask you what you're wearing? Uh, yeah. Red sweater, button-down shirt. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Now, ABC 7 News at 11. On your side, we begin with a breaking news alert. And we begin tonight with the New Hampshire primary. Too close to call at this hour. Senator Bernie Sanders and Pete Buttigieg just a few thousand votes apart. These are the raucous campaign headquarters as they celebrate tonight. Some more breaking news. Billionaire Andrew Yang and Colorado Senator Michael Bennett both suspending their campaigns. All right, so let's take a look at the numbers as we know them right now. With 80% of the precincts reporting and a 15% threshold needed for delegates, only these three candidates appear to be in play. Senator Andrew, Amy Klobuchar, she rocketed into third place following her debate performance on Friday, which a lot of people said she did a great job. Both Joe Biden and Senator Elizabeth Warren, who's the senator of Massachusetts right next door, they don't even figure in to earn any delegates at all in this. We're going to break down what is next for the field in just a few minutes. But first here at home, big concerns continue, and it's from our weather department. That's right. We are in a very short window where the chances of staying dry outweigh the potential for more rain. But that window is going to close soon. Storm Out 7 Chief Meteorologist Bill Kelly with a forecast. Bill? Yeah, a little treat for a dry commute tomorrow, but then it's going to be at least morning commute. But then the evening commute is going to be wet again. We're dry out there now, or at least rain free. Things are still pretty wet and they're going to stay that way. Humidity levels remain high, but our next weather maker back to the west that's going to be working on in. Notice your future cast as we run you through the overnight hours does paint the picture of it being dry here. Some areas of fog. We'll keep those clouds in our forecast, but it will be dry for the morning. But as I stop this here at 10 o'clock, out west, you start to see some of that green. That is our next weather maker that will be on the way. Your wake-up temperatures around the region, cooler than this morning. Everybody still is above freezing. We'll say 36 Winchester, 42 D.C., 42 around Quantico, 38 Frederick. Wait till you see the numbers, both the highs and the lows. We'll have that in just a few minutes. But with the rain that we've seen and still on the way, Stormwatch 17 is on, uh, is on your side. We have a blog with umbrella etiquette. You want to check it out. It's, it's there on our website or on our app as well. Uh, you can get some tips there and some of the stuff that you know you're already going to know. But there's some stuff on there you might go, oh, that's kind of interesting. Anyway, uh, we invite you to check that out. It is on WJLA.com. Send it back over to you. All right, Bill, thanks very much. And if all this rain and cold has got you down, let me just take a second and lift your spirits. And here's how I'll do it. The world champs return to action tomorrow. Yep, Nats pitchers and catchers report to West Palm Beach in the morning. By the way, it's sunny and warm down there. The first workout is Thursday. The rest of the position players will be arriving on Monday with the first full squad workouts a week from today. Now, the first spring game is February 22nd, a World Series rematch, interestingly enough, against the Houston, I'm not stealing your signs, Astros. Oh, John. Well, parents and community leaders, they are calling for more transparency when it comes to the future of D.C.'s only public all-girls school. It is essentially borrowing space in a charter school building, and its lease agreement runs through the next school year. Parents, though, are concerned an upcoming move could make it difficult for their daughters to attend. ABC 7's Annalisa Gale is live at the Board of Education headquarters with today's discussion. Annalisa. Michelle, that's right. There are growing concerns that that school will be moved to a location that is simply not convenient for families, especially in Ward 8. They want to know more about what the plan is beyond the next school year. I want to keep this school because it's an all-girls school. I don't want no boys there. Students at Excel Academy say to know it is to love it. It is the only public all-girls school in the city. I have a good rapport with her teachers. Parents like Rona Proctor are waiting anxiously for more information from DCPS on what will happen to the school after the 2020-2021 school year. But I know that there's also a growing community uh, that wants to see DCPS's uh, only all-girls school stay right here in Ward 8. In a letter obtained by 7 on your side, DCPS's chief operating officer, Patrick Davis, says they are trying to identify a site that will serve Excel Academy's long-term program and enrollment needs. He went on to say that they will prioritize long-term facility options in Ward 6.